Yeah, you <laughs> wait. Well, then welcome to a RuneScape 3 developer Q&A. This is the first of hopefully many and uh, is a new format that will allow you to ask or ask plenty of questions. We've taken a load today from Reddit, from the forums, from Twitter. I think the hashtag's down the bottom of the screen as well, so you can have a look there if you'd like to ask some more throughout the stream. Also got the Twitch chat, where we'll take your feedback. But it ultimately allow you to ask all the questions that are related to, you know, relatable topics, relevant topics, things that are going on in the community right now, and also bigger issues. But we're willing to actually answer some of the like bigger issue stuff. And where we can, yes. Where, yeah. where we, can. we are going to like answer those questions for you um, and give you real answers. Before I go any further, I want to introduce the team. Now you saw there, if you looked at the countdown, you saw who they were, but you need to put a name to a face. So do you want to go around? I'm Mod James to start with. I'm just the host. That's all. Nothing special. Um, let's start over there, go on. Okay, I'm Mod Stu, a senior content developer. Um, I work on the Guardians team, um, great lover of quests, lore content. Uh, I'm Mod Pi, I'm a game engine developer slash content developer. Uh, I currently work with the ninjas and do a lot of the combat related stuff as well. Hi, I'm Mod Kelpie, I'm a project manager on RuneScape. And a little bit more, we go into that. Yeah, no, we'll go into that in a second. <laughs> yeah. I got that for the second question. For the first question, though, comes in from Armadon. Oh, yeah, Armadon. And it says, does this new Q&A stream or the new Q&A stream format mean there'll be no more RSTV or TV previews of upcoming updates? So if you weren't aware, then previously we did some previews every, you know, it was like we tried to do them once a week of the up and coming content that was coming into the game. Um, and we did a more kind of in-depth behind the scenes of development. Now you will not miss that. What's gonna happen instead is we'll do the generic Q&A and answer any questions you really have. Um, and if there is anything we'd like to show you, something that really fits the format of, we'd love some feedback on it, we'd like to show you like behind the scenes of development on it, things like Tusker. What did you write on there? So they're getting pie wrong, it's annoying me. Uh, <laughs> Um, so you know, if there's anything that we'd like to show you things like that, then we will bring that on as a sub, uh, like a sub segment. So, uh, an example being, if if Mod Chris I would like to show you about show you some stuff about Tusker and get some feedback on it, he'll come on the set, he'll show it off in game, and he'll give you a chance to give your feedback, ask questions about it, answer your questions about it, on top of um, generic Q and A each week as well. Anyway, the question that you're referring to from Goggle33, with Anna leaving the ninja team as lead ninja, are there any plans to recruit a few more J-Mods? The team, oh, nearly went too early then. The team, you had a long question. The team does some of the best work and it'd be a shame to decrease the size. Yes, um, so yeah, we've, we've talked a little bit about increasing the ninja team um, over the past few weeks or so. And some people have been concerned because a few people have left the ninja team does seem like it has reduced in size, but um, today we've kind of, well, over the last week or so, we've been putting together like a, a, a larger ninja team, essentially. Um, and also I will now be filling in Anna's role of uh, lead ninja. So Mod, so, so Mod Calpy, new lead ninja? Yes, yeah. I'm very excited. You've been working with the ninja team nervous, closely for a yes, long time yes, there, haven't you? Yeah, I've been working with all the kind of teams really um, pretty closely so yeah pretty excited for that um, and then anything else to add or? yeah I mean like so um, Mod Pie being Ninja Ninja for a while still is we've got another three content developers as well as Mod Pie a couple of QA so that's four four total content four, developers for yeah, Ninja four team. developers so, so that's so that's increased in size so you can expect um, more stuff coming out the Ninja team essentially um, but yeah I mean it's early days in terms of like increasing the team size and stuff, some people are still finishing off some other projects and such. So you'll see it, the effects in a couple of weeks' time, hopefully. So like ultimately, the Ninja team isn't going anywhere. If anything, it's getting it's going to be more prominent it's, yeah, it's and, more and bigger prominent. than it has been in yeah. the past. So people tend to love Ninja fixes and stuff. We're going to be doing that. We're going to probably be doing some more of the kind of like Ninja Spotlight stuff that has been successful in the past and whatnot. So yeah, it should be good. So and continuing with yourself, Colophon has asked. Any further news on the quantity of updates versus the the quality versus the quantity debate and the update frequency? It's something we're still investigating. Obviously, we did uh, play so a power poll. There was Dev uh, Mod Pips's Dev blog originally. Yep. Um, we did the player power poll as a follow up to get players' opinions. We're doing some kind of like in-house analytics research um, to make sure we kind of get it right. The increase in Ninja team was something that we just felt like either way it was a good thing. You know, 
Um, what the Ninja team have been doing in the past is some very great work, and we wanted to increase the team a little bit. Um, but yes, we're still investigating that side of like more meaningful, less frequent updates. Um, we're getting there. Um, well, yeah. the, well, the players will find out, won't they? As soon yeah, as, yeah. As soon Once we've we made the decision, we'll decision about yeah. what it's going to be. You'll probably hear it on a dev blog from Mob Pips himself, yes. or and then in depth here with some questions and answers um, as well. Um, next question coming from Luke Morrison. One, it's a bit like a bit of an icebreaker, so I thought I'd put it at the top. Um, what's the longest project you've worked on and the quickest? I guess we'll start over with Stu. Stu? Uh, let's see. The one with the longest development time was definitely Death of Chivalry. Uh, that was originally meant to be about four months, and I got to do it in six months in, in the end because of the, uh, the world event that was associated with and getting postponed a little bit. Uh, shortest uh, would have to be something really insignificant. Um, I guess a bug fix, <laughs> if you were just randomly... Yeah, I, I guess so. M maybe the, the reworks I made to Demon Slayer, the third version of it, or um, Ninja Monkeys was one of the very first things that I did as a weekend holiday event, or... Uh, or um, Agaroth, the, 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 the replayable boss. Most of that was stuff that we were planning to put into the quest anyway, and we had to postpone it because we didn't have enough QA time to finish that off, so we d I did that. Uh, in like a day and then uh, release it and then it came up them the following week so yeah. What about yourself Mod Pie? The one that felt the longest was definitely those draggable bank tabs. Yeah, like, oh, that's something you've done very recently. Though. Yeah I know it, it's yeah that code still gives me nightmares. <laughs> um, the longest probably is um, EOC. Um, EOC or RuneSpan although technically I'm still working on EOC <laughs> so you know that's that's a project that's lasted two years. Longer um, than that now even like coming up for yeah. EOC. Um, <laughs> Getting there. Like Shortest is probably just, I think we managed to get a dual arena stall fixed and th fully through all the QA and ready to release and I think it was about 25 minutes from <laughs> the fact it was reported to done, which was pretty good. What's cool. like, what's the most like, because obviously you work on the ninja team and you have them for a long time, what's the most like, this is like the smallest bug you've ever fixed, like the most, something you've looked at, hang on, why are we even fixing this? <laughs> Are you, I don't well, like that. useless. No, nothing we do in the Ninja Team is useless. What are you talking about? I know it's not useless, but, um, like, but there must be something where you're thinking, like I'm changing the colour or something, like for well, the tiniest amount. Like. <laughs> God, no, no, because we don't do those things. Like, Fair enough. There's no point to it. We won't. That's do right. It. That's good to know then. For that, for everyone else, that's good to know. Well, wait, so you don't, you don't really work. I don't, I don't <laughs> work on projects the same way these kind of guys do. I'm, I'm going to leave so you. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to leave you. Please do. Then. And next one, I'm going to jump into a really big one from Made a Cake. Um, any progress or updates on the NXT? Um, so the team who are working on NXT are busy working away on it. I kind of, you know, when they're ready to update players further, they will do so. So I don't really have any well, in updates the, really on in, it. In the last blog we had on the forums, they had quite a nice screenshot side yes. by, and then someone made the side by side and read yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that really pretty, cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so no, nothing new to report? Yeah, I mean, like the guys are working away. Um, it's one of those projects where we don't, we don't put a release date on it because it's, it's ready when it's ready sort of thing. You, well, you've make sure got to just finalized. keep on testing it, um, you know, developing testing, and, and you, you release it when it's ready. Um, but um, yeah, I have seen some stuff, some stuff the players haven't seen yet, and it's looking really cool. There's some new stuff for it that's got developers excited and such. But, I'm not going to tell you yet. <laughs> it's much faster than HTML5. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> and prettier. Yes. <laughs> we got, I, think, I think generally everyone kind of learned some lessons from HTML5 and stuff like that. The idea was to build on top of that, wasn't it? Yeah. And make something yeah. that like, players could actually have and use as a legit client that they could play with. So. Yeah, it's more important now that you know Chrome's dropping Java. Like other, other browsers will probably follow suit as we get later on in the day. You know, it's like it's really important that we get this stuff done. All right, so moving on, we have one for you, Pi, from Berserk Guy. Could we have it the, so that when I queue an ability and I don't have adrenaline for it, so if I queue a threshold with right, revolution yeah. on, it won't stop me attacking and instead would continue in using basics until ready to use that threshold ability? Um, technically, it's def definitely possible. Like um, we, might, we might have a few people that think it's a bit easy mode. So, you know, we'd probably have to, like, get some opinions on that. But other than that, no, it's definitely possible. So is that the reason behind not doing it? Is there a reason behind yeah, well, it in the first place? Like, traditionally, anything that wasn't a basic was, like, kept out of, um, 
was was kept out of Revolution. But you can queue a thresholds if you have the um, if you have the adrenaline anyway. So, like, I, I don't see that much of a problem with it well, apart I, from general. To be perception. fair, like, I understand this you guys mean because you're like, I think I've like almost got the adrenaline. You press your threshold, and then <laughs> you just kind of stand there like, nope. Well, when it, when, it, when, it, when it lights up, that's when you press the button. <laughs> <All> right. <Okay. laughs> Good, have to, you're just going to have to teach me then. Yeah. Right, so next one, this is calling for you, Stu, for, from Avanik. Um, what are the current plans with the Elder Gods and Dragonkin storyline pillars? Particularly the Dragonkin, as it's now been 14 months since One of a Kind, and who doesn't want more Karapak? Well, there's certainly a plan for it. Obviously, we're not going to reveal what that plan is now because that's going to be revealed through future content. Um, quests take a proportion of our development time, you know, our development schedule. So um, we plan to release further Dragonkin content over um, the, the course of, of the, the next couple of years. I know particularly with Adamant and Rune Dragons that I'm working on, I've got some Dragonkin content, some reveals there, particularly Ooh, about Metal Dragons. Nice. So that should touch over for a little while. Okay. So, yeah, so I've got some questions later on about Adamant and Rune Dragons and, and uh, Rune Labs. So I guess we might get to touch on a little further, see what you can, can give us on that later on. Um, the next question coming in was from... Sacrilegious. Can you add buff slash debuffs, potion timers, etc., for when you use the evolution of combat combat style, but with the legacy interface? Um, so this is one that's uh, it's you showed me earlier. Yeah, yeah, it's already in there. <laughs> um, it's a bit, it's a little bit hidden. It's, it's in the if you know how to unsheath and sheath and legacy, it's there. But you go to the uh, combat side interface. It's the one that appears when you hit F five. Um, with the combat styles on it, and then you right-click the little icon in the top right-hand corner, the yeah. one that so normally you means... So spec in Legacy, or when yeah. you change your attack strength? The one that normally yeah. means that a monster doesn't have a weakness. Um, right-click that, and then you should be able to toggle it on, and then they'll appear under the mini-map. So it's already done. Um, while we're on that, do you want to go through... There was another one that quite a lot of players were sending in yesterday after the update about chat always on and firing off abilities, and where that toggle is kind of hidden. Do you want to uh, give that, that one, well? you, if you look on your chat tabs, you've got the ones at the bottom for yeah. your filters. Um, if you right click the all tab, then you'll have uh, your chat, like chat keybind always toggle yeah. there. So, so yeah, yeah so always on chat is what it's called in there, yeah. That's one if you're wondering why you can't, in that, that mode where you've got the ESC combat, but the legacy interface, you can't shoot off your abilities and it's just typing in the chat bar, that is why. But there were quite a few reports like yesterday. So. There was also, there's also a bug in there with uh, WAS controls. So we're moving mm. the camera with WASD. Um, it was working in the beta for some reason. It's not working in live, so that is a bug that we are looking to get fixed, hopefully for the next update, but we'll see. What are you smiling at? You want to share it? Oh, <laughs> if anyone's wondering why I'm fat, it's because I really like food. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, it just makes me laugh. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. OK, here's one. Uh, Damon, a.k.a. Ron Ron. I guess this one's from Red X. It's quite a long username. Are there any plans of implementing a mailbox system for RuneScape? So sending PMs whilst offline that someone could receive when they next log in? It is something that's probably quite desirable. Well, no, I know it is desirable. Um, um, but it is something that requires a lot of kind of technical work and such. Um, it is a big project. So... Yes, we could potentially see it. Have, I mean, you, have you ever considered it before on the backlog anywhere? Um, it's it's been mentioned. I, I don't want to. The, the problem is, is I, if I if I say too you know, so much, then people kind of expect it, and then I get asked questions for the next ten years <laughs> on where is it. Um, but it's it is it, it could be a possibility. It's offline messaging system essentially, and that requires a lot of work. You it'd be nice to see, but it's the sort of thing where. It does take a lot of work to do, and you you look at that time and you go, can we spend it better elsewhere, sort of thing. So would that be a ninja time, or would it come out of like retention teams, or it could, it could be because it would be definitely be a game engine update. So um, it would be something that I could pick up, but it obviously it would put me position to do that. Yeah, yeah. it Take would put me out, out of action for quite a while though. So obviously I wouldn't be doing ninja fixes, so it would fall back on the rest mm -hmm. of the team. Um, but it's definitely something that's doable, just not quickly. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. All right, so Fossbinder asked, would, we would there be a possibility of seeing bot-busting streams from the RS3 team as well? So for those who don't know, the old school team have done it, I believe it's twice now. It was once last year and then again at the uh, Game Blast this year for the Well of Goodwill. They've done a bot-busting stream where they've essentially gone around with um, 
they use their mod wreath and mod Ronan and uh, mod Archie's been involved as well where they find some bots, kill them when they're trading over their wealth to like one account and take the money and put it in the well for a good cause. Um, now last Thursday on their developer Q&A, the old school developer Q&A, they mentioned they would like to do it again in the future and so what we said is that when they do it or a similar time that they do it, we'd like to do it as well so that you can, you know, both RS3 and old school get to do a bot busting stream and watch the bots get owned because that'd be good fun. Yeah. Uh, the next one coming oh, from... Sorry, just, I think oh, just oh. something that I've seen a lot of people kind of asking on the kind of bot front is kind of like, you know, they report bots and then they don't see anything immediately happening and they wonder if like, if we're actually doing anything about it. And I think uh, Mod Balance commented on either the forums or Reddit um, recently that we do them in, we ban bots in waves um, so that they don't People know. Do, they yeah, don't they know, don't know what, what yeah, how banned they got for, banned exactly. for. Yeah. Um, so yes, do if you do see bots, do continue to report them. And eventually um, they will go. Yes. I've seen they definitely do go. Um, there was another question that came in. Now, I don't think it's within my list because I didn't read it over there again. So I'm going to just bring it up now. And someone mentioned the idea. I think it came from Reddit a little while ago as a ninja suggestion. Adding the ability of you, so adding the requirement to complete Dragon Slayer in order to use a Dragonfire Shield or Anti-Fire Potions to stop things such as Dragon Bots because they'd have to go for a load of quests and then couldn't just, you know, flat one stats, just melee and start killing dragons. Is that a possibility, something you'd be willing to consider? It's a possibility, but I don't think it would stop them. For, for one, there's quest bots out there that can yeah. complete the quest for you. And, you know, judging from, like, even my Iron Man, you could probably complete Dragon Slayer within what, 24, 48 hours game time, really easily. Yeah, I mean, so, you see on Reddit, like, there's people who've done kind of like speed like runs to see how, yeah. And, yeah, and it's just. And I think you, we, we've seen it, uh, you know, I've, I've seen some of the analytics on bots and stuff, and you, you close one door and they'll open another, so. We'd rather focus on, I guess, wave bands and just. Yeah, probably. I mean, it. it's not something I am deeply involved with, so I can't really talk too much about it. But. Okay, fair enough. Um, another one from Avanik here. I think, uh, yeah, you had one earlier on as well. What is your favourite god and why is it Armadil? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're like a, a heavy lawman. That's a leading dude. question there. <laughs> it's um, going to start with you. Hmm. I mean, Armadil's pretty cool. Um, I think he definitely deserves more content. Um, <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't say he's my favourite. Honestly, I'm quite fond of Sarah Doman. I know that he gets a lot of hate and um, we've certainly given him a more... Uh, contentious perspective uh, in more recent content. Um, but what I like ab about him is that he's a god who started off as a human. He has mortal flaws and, and, and traits that he, he's then brought into um, a divine scenario and then having to uh, re reconcile the, uh, the mis mistakes and the, the flaws in his character against all this, this power and, and how dangerous that can be. I think that's quite an interesting uh, uh, concept to play with. I have this feeling, I don't know, I'm going to bring it up, that doesn't, is Sarah Doman the god that has the helmet that locates the Elder Arthur? That's the one, yeah. Yeah, all right, cool. Do you know what it's called? Because uh, I don't. The, <laughs> crown, <laughs> the <laughs> crown Archival. There we go, look at this. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Put him on the spot and he got it. Well, anyway, your mod pie, you got a favourite god? Um, I quite like Zaros, but I think, like, going back to my roots, I still kind of like Zamorak. He's been, he's been softened a bit recently, which I'm not particularly happy with, but I kind of like the idea of order through chaos and kind of like, let's just throw off on it into a pot and then like the strongest will survive. But then I would be biased towards that, being like a big fan of the wilderness. So just, just yeah, just stick everyone in, in a big pot and then we'll fight you out. What about you, Mod Kelpie? Um, the Kendall. <laughs> yep. You mean that look like terrible bear? Yeah. <laughs> that guy was great. And that, that's, that was just a guy. Hey, hey. That was just a guy pretending to be the god. You know, the, the real god, I'm sure, is still out there. You know? <laughs> I didn't expect that. Like one bit. I don't think anyone expected that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should answer myself. I kind of... I kind of like the idea of the goddess just because I like the idea of Virago, but I don't think that counts as a god really. So I'm going to go... Of gods. I'm going to go with Guthix purely because of... Way, 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 way back in time, there was the uh, Tanub show, and yeah. it's like RS gods exposed and Guthix, just like that character he made of like what Guthix was. I don't know, I just like that. So that's how I like. That's how I remember like thought of Guthix for some reason because I was very young when that obviously came out, and uh, so when he 
died in the quest, whatever. I was like, that's <laughs> not good. He's nothing like that. Everyone knows that he's dead. Oh, I, I, was, I remember speaking to Anna when she was making that quest and I knew that someone was going to kill Gathix. <laughs> I was like, please, please, for the love of God, when he dies, just make him go, Gathix! <laughs> it would have been amazing. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, from that kind of light-hearted note on to quite a serious one. Actually, before I do, um, you said that Audi was cool, right, Stu? Yeah. So are you upset about the rite of passage? The fact that um, it's a shame, I think, um, if, <laughs> though I can guarantee that uh, with the loyal supporters that Armadale has, it will be back on Rune Labs again very soon. I tell you what, I think I've it's, dismissed it's, it twice <laughs> already today. <laughs> it's Armad it's Armadin. He has the, uh, the picture of the, on Twitter, yeah. on, like, on everywhere, everywhere, like Reddit of the, the picture of the Armadale follower, and uh, like, he posts everywhere, and he's like a super supporter of Armadale. They've, so got, a, they've got a core cool following. And yeah, we can, and same with the, uh, the werewolves. They've got a core cool following of mm -hmm. people like the werewolves as That's well. That's cool. Yeah, Rite of Passage has a great concept, and, and I'm sure we'll implement it eventually. Mm -hmm. It's only a matter of time. Right, so let's have a look for the next one. So, again, from like the light hide, you know, Jake, on to quite a serious one, which is from Jake RS. Again, we wanted to say we wanted to address some of the kind of bigger topics from the community and not ignore them. So Jake RS asks, do you feel that the excessively impressive MTX cost cosmetics devalue other content that you spend time developing? And then the example being from what was on the top of Reddit yesterday, the new Drake with the um, 99 summoning dragon pet from the egg. Um, no, not really. I mean, with like the, the example used of summoning, uh, summoning 99, you, you got Steel Titan, you got your skill capes, you got the fact that you've got 99 something, you know, there's a bunch of other stuff there. Um, so I would say, like, you know, it doesn't devalue getting 99 something at all. Um, I don't know if you guys have got any thoughts on it, but yeah, generally, I think you, we, we don't see it that way. Um, I guess, yeah. and on top of that, um, it is a very old piece of content now, 99 something, so like, it's not really a fair comparison of the graphics time spent back in, yeah. what would it be, 2008 versus the graphics time spent now yes. yeah a piece of content um as the other things that were mentioned about it uh, earlier were that um the graphics artists there are more graphics artists on the content teams it's just that there's you know when you go for a quest there's a hell of a lot of immersion in there yeah of all the stuff they create as opposed to an item so. yeah i mean like you as a i'm sure you still know as well that about you like taking quests into your know, example um you know, the team of you know, they've got their graphics artists and you know, they need to think about where they're going to put all the graphics and they're not going to want to spend like you know, the vast amount of their time creating you know, just that one reward like cosmetic you know, it's cosmetic as well you know, that, you know, that one cosmetic reward um, they're going to want to make like cool environments and you know, other aspects of the quest and stuff and characters and whatnot I guess a good example actually is the aquarium because there's some pretty cool from mm. your team that is isn't it yep indeed Steve. some pretty cool graphics in there as well all the different Very well things. received, yeah. yeah. All right, so moving on, honey trees. Um, will you be able to add the great white shark to the sign of the porters, just like an ordinary shark? If um, so, I'm guessing it means if you've already unlocked it with your prom points. Yeah. I don't know whether that goes ninja or it'd go back to your team, Stu, as um, the creator of the aquarium. Well, with a bit of, te of team restructuring going on at the moment, Mod Doctor, who developed the aquarium, will be moving on to ninja very shortly. That works perfectly, yeah. then, doesn't so, it? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> hopefully, you'll be able to pick that one. Up. Are we sure that it wasn't already done this week? I'm pretty sure we've already done it. I know there was sure a few. So there was the it. interface added for the fit of like the fish you've caught. There was the using was the using of the prawn pennies mm -hmm. has gone in as well. I'm Not pretty sure, sure. I, I read the patch. Uh, maybe note. I went back through the patch notes. I'm pretty sure we've already done it. Great. I might be wrong. If in that, which then, case, then, then we'll definitely yeah. do. But yeah. I've I've seen one thing mentioned was uh, adding the uh, the new sharks to the tackle box, which would be a great one to do. Um, mm -hmm. If I if I can find some time, I'll do it myself. But if not, maybe we can put the ninja backlog. It's got a yeah. notepad. Look at this. Yeah. Getting prepared. Well, I'm writing down ninja fixes. Come on. That's what yeah. I'm here to do. There you go. So, um, if it has been fixed, then that's my bad. <laughs> you can blame me. If it hasn't, then it, I guess it will be done. Yeah. No, um, do right. Where are we moving on from there? Bonafide three. That's <laughs> 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 one laughing at now. It made me laugh. Wow. All right. What's been? I'll, I'll ask this one to you, Stu, because you know anyone feel free to chip in because combat specialist, uh, your team. Um, so you work obviously very closely with them. But uh, he's asking, what's been going on with the dark light recently? I've seen a lot of ranting about it. Can you can explain what's caused the fuss and where you've ended up? Yeah, certainly. So with the turn of the quest, uh, we did an upgrade to dark light. 
Um, we also had a look at where dark, dark light um, is effective on different demons, and we found that inexplicably lots of uh, demons weren't affected by, by dark light previously, things like imps and hellhounds, and um, we wanted to try and make it you know, useful against all demons. Um, so, but that didn't really seem appropriate as something that was just something you unlocked as an upgrade. It seemed like something that was really more of an oversight so that we should resolve first. And then on top of that, we, um, we had the upgrade to dark light to, to make it more effective. Um, the effect that dark light had really was really quite potent. Um, and we did do time trials and we um, did uh, get approved by, by balancing and so forth. It seemed like it'd be okay. Um, but um, after uh, l looking at the results in the game for, for a period of, of time, particularly with um, some of the high-level demons like Calgarians, the wealth injection that was being uh, produced through, through uh, Darklight's buff was just unsustainable. It was something that we needed to address. We've had a lot of feedback from players, um, a lot of suggestions about how we, we could um, resolve the issue, but most of the suggestions were keep it um, overpowered, but just allow me to do it, let, let my particular set, let have a more restricted set of requirements, but still uh, let less people do it. But um, the, the wealth injection that was, was there was just simply too much. So we had to unfortunately reduce the effectiveness of dark light. Um, Mod Riley has been keeping on top of this the, the last couple of weeks. I've probably, honestly, he's probably spent more time on resolving this nerf and listening to players and trying to work out a compromise. Uh, then he probably spent on the, the, the rewards and the achievements for uh, Dimension Disaster in the first place in terms of the time that was available. Um, we've got uh, Chris Long in, involved in discussing it. We've had uh, Timbo involved. A lot of the um, combat um, developers uh, w wanted to try and find a solution for this that allowed us to um, keep Dark Light in, in, the, in the game, ha having the effectiveness that it did without unbalancing the economy. Um, we may do a, some additional tuning in the future, but at the moment we, um, we've at least resolved the, the wealth injection that was there. Um, maybe it might be something we'd look at through uh, invention as well, because that's really something that's more, meant to be more about um, specialising your, your, your gear and um, moving away from the, the tiering uh, process that we, we have at, at, at the moment with equipment. But um, we'll keep an eye on it, but I think for the moment um, it's fairly stable. Yeah, so initially it took, it took a, obviously a, a nerf because it needed a nerf and then it took a slight buff afterwards, mm -hmm. didn't it, again? Um, I, was, I was talking to Chris out and uh, like Mod Ramen and such who were looking at testing it at the time or look at its effectiveness again. And on Calgarian Demons it kind of had a very steady hit rate, so you were hitting often, but you know, you weren't mm -hmm. busting out huge hits with it. Is that kind of a place where you'd want it to be? Like, uh, what uh, what power do you do you plan on it on it being like, especially from like a combat you know um, a combat <coughs> specialist about you know what, yeah. what weapons to be able to do like how powerful do you want it to be do you want it to be the best weapon against demons especially things like Calgarian where you know do you want it to be better than a Drygor a level a tier ninety Drygor or is it supposed to be because of it's you know essentially free uh, with a, then obviously an upgrade from the quest is it supposed to be good but not as good as your highest tier equipment. Um, essentially it is pretty obviously a balancing concern in that you don't want to devalue tier 90s because currently they're like the money makers for PVM. But um, you want it comparable so those that can't afford tier 90s can do it as well. But you also don't want to remove these niche items in game um, and that's something that we're really looking at an awful lot in the co in combat because obviously when EOC came in a lot of these niche things is like oh I'll take that and that and that. Yeah exactly. That's John like Pye. a repentance kit. You took my fighter hat from me. <laughs> don't, don't, don't you which hand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like that's something we're definitely pushing to have it come back. But obviously, if you take something that is essentially a, qu uh, a quick quest reward and devalue it in nineties, then obviously it's not good. Yeah. Um, if it's kept nice and small and niche, that's good. Obviously, Stu quite rightly raised the. Um, the point of it was injecting a lot of cash and that's really the source of it. We weren't like really upset that you guys were owning Calgarians, it was more to do with the fact of the amount of mo money and wealth being generated. Um, but yeah, from a combat point of view also, like hitting often but not so hard is always, always preferred over hardly ever hitting because if you think about it just in terms of gameplay and like your enjoyment of the game, if you hardly ever hit, you're just gonna be like, this sucks, I'm going somewhere else, you know? Okay, fair enough. Um, if if people have more feedback about it, because it is a big topic, mm -hmm. right? We've just talked about it for a little bit, like a fair bit of time. 
Where can they submit that feedback before we move on if they want to submit further feedback? Uh, yeah, sending it to Maud Riley basically would be preferable. So uh, send it via Twitter <laughs> or uh, put in recent game updates. Recent game updates um, on the forums. We, yeah, we did yeah. have did a, a sticky thread there, but that was more to, to uh, resolve that in initial wealth injection and, and, and deal with, with the nerf, which has been resolved. But so, f so further tuning is something that uh, we would do uh, long term in separate threads. All right, so moving on from there, then the next thing I want to talk about is Iron Men briefly, and also potentially Dead Man mode, because we've had a lot of questions and a lot of thoughts about that since it got mentioned um, by Mod Matt K and thought by Mod Matt K and the old school uh, team a few weeks ago. So I guess we'll kick it off with Earn My Wings asked, when are you planning to add the Iron Man group bossing system, and how will it work? So first off, do you want to explain the fact that they, they will get an Iron Man group bossing system? Yes, so um, this was a poll that we did uh, a little while back, um, and yes, uh, Iron Man being able to group boss in groups of other Iron Man um, won the poll, so it's our intention to do that. Um, we've so Mod Easty has been is the developer for Iron Man, and unfortunately, he hasn't had a lot of time recently um, to work on that project. So I've, I've been speaking to him about it. It might be something that we take into Ninja to, to get it done, because it's not a huge project. Um, so yeah, we can get that kind of done and out of uh, the way sort of thing. So that might be coming to you, Mod Pie. Yeah. Maybe him, maybe Sounds one of like the other three, yeah. I'm looking forward to it though, because it was, it, really. I think the outcome of that poll was, uh, the outcome of the poll was what I voted for personally, mm -hmm. on my own personal Hardcore Man account as well, which is really nice of group bossing, but only in an Iron Man yeah. group, so only with your other Iron Man friends, so you can't you know, just send your main in and leech with him or whatever. But so I thought it was really nice. That'd be yeah. cool. We need to do like a bit more investigation in how you actually get like drops and stuff because we still want to make it that you have to contribute. You can't leech. Yeah. You can't just you know, sit in the background and um, just kind of get there and then get your rewards and sort of thing. You, you have to contribute and stuff. So because that's, that's, a, boss that's a big part of Iron Man. You know, so. you, you've got to like work for it yourself. So we need to make sure that's still in and stuff. Yeah. I guess, just off the top of my head, if you're going in with a group, then it will know how many players you're going in with, us, potentially. So if it knows how many you're going in with, maybe you have to deal at least something Quite like a few of the 50% yeah. of your split. So if you went in with five people, you have to do te at least 10% of the damage, so at least half of your, like, yeah. something to make sure you are actually doing at least a sizable amount of damage, not just one hit, and then have, like, your super high level Iron Man friend just kill the whole boss while yeah. you stand in the yeah. corner. Yeah. I guess, are you going to open that those thoughts up to players or are you just going to try and come up with a solution and if pitch they, it to them? If they want to, yeah, feel free to send us feedback on that. Um, uh, yeah, we were going to we were going to investigate it ourselves. I, I guess, yeah, we can share those thoughts and stuff, see what we come up with. It might be that just the case that we just go like, this is such a blaringly obvious choice. We just go ahead with it. Otherwise, you know, we've got several things like you know, like we you know, we pulled it in the first place, you because know, we weren't sure or something. If we have that sort of situation, then yeah, we'll involve the players. Um, so the next thing under kind of Iron Man mode was Dead Man mode. Mm -hmm. I guess I should quickly explain yes. what that is and where it's come from. It kind of like developed amongst some of the old school developers on a stream where Matt K was discussing some ideas that some players had earlier on in the day with his team and he came up with the idea of a world essentially where it's like Iron Man again you can only put Iron Man on that world but you start again from scratch um, everything's what you level one you brand you know brand new account but everywhere's PvP yes <laughs> I'm just gonna make you happy because you love <laughs> PvP stuff like, everywhere's PvP and essentially whether you have like you know a slightly increased XP rate or something to you know so people can get out there and fight quicker um, essentially, if you die to another player, that's it. You lose everything. You're, ba you're back to square one. Your you brand new count again. Your account's essentially wiped. Your quests are gone, your stats are gone, your items are gone. And the person who killed you gets a key to your bank. He gets everything you had. That so he like, he like grabs everything you had. Um, whether it is like an Iron Man mode so you couldn't trade with other players, or it's just a normal mode so you could trade with your friends and stuff. And have like your little clan who owns, I don't know, they just own the rock. Like, don't go near the rock. <laughs> The other idea is when you do kill someone, you get a skull above your head, uh, as you would a normal skull, um, obviously, back in the day. And the around towns and prominent areas, there'd be very high-level guards. If you've got a skull, would shout and chase after you and try and kill you, but they would hurt. So, like, so essentially like, a bandit. So you can't go to a bank and stuff like that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I guess 
Were there thoughts on that? You know, from oh, a PvP yeah. perspective, I know you want to do PvP stuff. Were there, were there like thoughts of doing anything that kind of PvP related? I'll let you just go ahead with whatever you were thinking. I mean, I, yeah, I think it sounds really cool. Um, I, we've got we're having our own kind of like you. Know, obviously, that's a that's been a conversation so far in old school. We have our own conversations about PvP um, with RS3. Um, like Mob Pie has been working on some stuff in his personal time. Myself and Maldisti have like been coming up with some ideas that we might look to develop in our own time as well, um, which are kind of have some similarities to that. Um, so you, know, it could be the case that we have something that's you know, in the same when we did Iron Man. You, know, we both had kind of like a normal Iron Man mode. It was then, it was like a dual release, wasn't it? Yeah, that's that's the reason then, I brought it up because yeah. I know it's a dual release and it's a similar kind of thing. But. Yeah, and then like they we have hardcore Iron Man, old school have Ultimate Iron Man. Yeah. You know, both teams did something that they felt was like more suited for their player base. Uh, so something like that could happen. Um, or if we just everyone just you know, loves it so much and stuff, if we think it's right, we you can go in at the same time. Um, definitely possible. So yeah. it's on the. It's kind it's of awesome. mm -hmm. in our minds at the minute. Like we know yeah. the discussion that's happening. I mean, like so they, if the players they, want it. Then they were talking about in terms of like when they actually get around to developing and stuff. It's not until much later in the year or something. So wasn't it? they they did do like a schedule of their kind of mm -hmm. stuff coming up, and I think on there it was around like. If there is such a thing, potentially like the Runefest time of the year, so yeah, October okay. time. I mean, I don't know if um, straw poll. Yeah, it can maybe be. See, yeah. If, see if players are interested. If you like to do people that. in the chat, here we go. Well, it'll, right? it'll come in the chat in a second. I just want to so. use a straw poll. Like <laughs> yeah. I, I just like <laughs> just I see old school one. using it. I'm like, yeah, I want straw polls. So there you go. <laughs> in the chat, you'll get the option of would you like a dead man mode, as described, as you've heard it before, or as I've just described it now. Yeah, or as, in as you some it, general yeah. kind, you know, like would you like something similar to that um, and then we'll get the results in a minute. In the meantime, I have a, a good question here from Miss XP, one to you Stu. Um, I'm very excited about the new Dragons update. I love the dev teasers you put out not so long ago. Are you able to hint whether it's going to be a May update or not? I'm not sure I'm able to answer <laughs> yeah, yeah. so that. That's so sorry, decision. this Dragons was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it's a June update. Okay. So because it's a Rune Labs one, um, we after you, we have it works in in a cycle of you. Once we actually get to releasing these projects, it, you one Rune Labs like criteria per month and one Rune Labs release per month. Um, obviously, there's a kind of I think it's a five month gap between like when we actually poll it and when we actually look to release it. So. You know, that was the first one, so I think that was kind of like January, yeah. June. We'll go through the room. So if we want, you'll go through the room stuff in a second. Yeah, yeah. Um, the one thing I want to do first, mm -hmm. just because I'm super keen, and I saw it over someone's shoulder today on a computer screen, is the uh, the Adian Rune Dragons. Mm -hmm. I saw someone over the, over their shoulder. I saw them uh, attacking some things that look very much like dragons. I wondered if you could give us any more teasers, anything else you haven't given away yet, even if it's small, something you can tell us. Um, okay, well, one major thing you should be aware of is that the Rune Dragons um, are going to be accessible from uh, in, on, in, on another part of Kethsi, uh, Mount Firewake, um, and accessible through the World Gate. Um, so as such, you're going to require Ritual of the Majorat and uh, Fate of the Gods in order to access it. Uh, that, ke that keeps the um, dragons nice and exclusive at a, at a high level um, and means that we can control the economy of the in influx of uh, Rune Bars more carefully. Um, also, make sure you stock up on uh, Dragon Bane ammunition because you'll be needing that for one of its phases. Oh, that's a pretty big one. That's a pretty big teaser, that one there. I like that. Um, I mean, they look cool. They're, 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 I, like, I like seeing them being developed and stuff. Before, before the dragons go out, would you be willing to show us them in game, maybe as a little um, spoiler on the stream, maybe? Yeah, certainly. I'm, I've been holding back on uh, teasing things myself recently because I, uh, I imagine the hard train will be starting relatively soon after we get this, this uh, first month's. Uh, content out of the way, but yeah, uh, when the time comes, certainly. I'm excited about that. And then, I guess, just to go back into the room stuff, do you want to go over, you mentioned there's a five-month delay, so we've been doing a lot of polls about, you know, this this month on Runelabs, we'd like to see a medium update, a small update, yeah. but nothing has essentially, not in a bad way, nothing's come of that in-game yet, and yeah. that's because of the lead time. So eventually you'll get to a point where you'll vote on something every month, and you'll get something every month, but it's obviously from, yeah. from the... Well, I mean, there is, to, to a small degree, like the Ninja team have been picking up small Ninja jobs from Rune Labs, and we will be looking to continue to do that. But in terms of like the actual criteria and what people vote for and stuff, yes, like none of those projects have come about yet. Um, 
Dragons was the first one, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, so June will be the first kind of like main Rune Labs release. Um, and then, can we expect one every month from that? Yeah, I mean that's the aim. Um, you, I can't hundred percent you know, commit to that because sometimes things occur and you need more time or something happens. You know. Um, but yes. So and you know, today we switched over the criteria of Rune Labs to um, kind of like maze criteria, and we're asking for and the content is for October, and we're asking for a Halloween themed update. So it's small size Halloween slash horror themed update. Apart from that, anything else goes really. So it can you can go for a kind of traditional Halloween event, or you can go for something a bit more permanent. Cool. Um, yeah. I can't remember what it was now. I read I read the, one of the top suggestions, but I can't remember what it was. But it sounded really cool. There is there. Are, I yeah. I've been I really reading through them. They are pretty now. sweet. There is there's some kind of like mini events where they have like a mascot versus uh, Ikvarian. I would, I've, can I, I, oh, I don't know how to pronounce good name. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's some there's like various degree versions of that sort of stuff, and you know, factions fighting each other and whatnot. Um, kind of a lot of like nice lore stuff. I saw one which might interest you, Stu, in uh, the going to kind of like replaying through old Halloween events in the dimension of disaster. Oh, interesting. Um, so kind of like because I think. Um, Zemmerigan, 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 yeah. um, as you know, he's been involved in some past Halloween events, so it's kind of like you play them, but you know, as if like the player never did them, just like you know, the 200th quest. Mm -hmm. um, so I think kind of like involving death, and you know, he's obviously still got a big spider in his bathtub, and nice. <laughs> someone hasn't been cleaning his house out and stuff like that. I thought it was pretty cool, it sounded nice. It's hey, interesting, what we, yeah. what we did have, we had the results to the dead man mode. I need it slightly bigger, um, but the majority is yes. I'm, by the look of the bars, I'm going to guess 68% yes. So would you like the shiny new thing or wouldn't you? 68% mm. voted yes, so there you go. Yeah. Um, it was just, just a random poll just to gauge what you guys were thinking in the chat. So yeah, I mean, like, you know, it's not, that's not confirmed. You know, that's, no. you know, that was just gauging interest and stuff, but it's, you know, it's good to know. Um, and that's useful information, as I said, like we're discussing like PvP and stuff, so it'll be useful for that. All right, here's, a, here's an interesting question, more of a random one from Cinder Quill. Given total free reign on a project, what update would you most likely most like to introduce to RuneScape? I'm going to have to think on this one. <laughs> it's got to be, like, I get tweeted about this regularly. It's been on Rune Labs, is proper ranked ladders for PvP, like ELO ladders. And then at the end of it, take like the top 64 and have like a double elimination tournament or something. Like, so like often. One v one only, or like clan ladders, or what would you want? Um, I'd, I'd like to definitely like to do one v one. Clan would be interesting. Top 64 clans, I'd like to see. Um, but basically, so often in the world, you get like, oh, I'm the best PK. I'm the best PK. It's like it would be awesome to actually go. You know what? That guy is the best <laughs> PK. Let's do that. Like the there's been some quite a cool. I saw it. Um, posted not too long ago about some of the warring clans for uh, war bands. I've been doing yeah. some some big battles and stuff. And yeah, that's cool. awesome to see. They're looking good. So, um, what about yourself? I would probably go. I would quite like some more exploration into the game, and I think the best way to do that would be sailing. <laughs> uh, you yeah. one of those guys? Aren't yeah, you? man. I want, I want sailing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'd be cool. Like first, I'll come back to you, Sue. Personally, for me. I would love to see one of my favourite things ever is the fire cape and the fight uh, at the fight caves, the fight killed and Harakan. Personally, I, I don't think quite did it self justice for me, and I'd love to see like a fight caves version too, with, like with the Tokar obviously doing something really cool to the next level. Like I would like to see that personally, but like uh, something that felt like Jad felt in two thousand and five, right? Where like you know. You took 24 goes at it. It took you three hours to get there. <laughs> you're shaking on your desk. You're like, <laughs> Jad hands, yeah. Your mum calls you for dinner, and you're like, oh, you missed your range train. It's like, 97 through your broom. You're dead. You're just like, oh, get great. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's like, I want something of like that momentous feeling. Like, that's what I would want to do. Anyway. Yeah, awesome. Um, I think it's a uh, toss-up of either completing all our 5th age quests, so that's uh, getting, finishing off a lot of quest lines, giving them, them uh, real justice and finality, um, and 
giving a, a greater landmass to the game, so adding a, a new content, more breathing room to be able to, to build our content, because currently, whenever we add new content to the game, it's just already so saturated with, with uh, stuff to do. That, I guess uh, you got to build our city, didn't you? You're on the team that mm -hmm. helped build our city. Yeah, so being able to actually not, not have to have deal with such a confined part of the world, as, as, as it were, and actually just make it as big as it needs to be, um, having that kind of uh, liberty in the future would be very what beneficial. You should do, what you should do, Stu, is you should start stamping your mark on the Rune Scheme and saying, you know what? There's not enough space. So everything I do will now be in the desert. Like, <laughs> the middle of the desert. Well, Menifos does And eventually, the eventually everyone will be like, I hate the desert. Like, I don't like getting to the middle of the desert. So then they'll give you a, a nice new area, maybe, to like build your content in, which yeah. would be cool. Or well, maybe I need to move to old, old school and uh, implement the, the new content there. <laughs> would you like Zaya. to do something like that, then? Um, there's, a, there's a lot of things about um, RS3 that I enjoy. I, I like the how much it's been improved. So maybe I'm not a particularly good fit, but... That they also have a lot of the benefits of not having so much content built on, onto it over, over time, so you, you can um, uh, create content in a more, more flexible and, and a faster turnaround. So it has its pros and cons. All right, anyway, the, uh, the next question, which one's the next page? Um, sorry, I should have prepped this one. Okay, here's one for you, John. Uh, hi. Yep. Need to call you up, they hi. know my name anyway, don't worry about it. I always mess up and like, damn it, <laughs> every time. Right, anyway, from Pure TPPC, he said, would it be possible to have an option to only train attack and strength simultaneously rather than the balanced or individual? I saw this. It sounds like a nice, a nice little update. I think it's rather, I think it might be rather niche, um, but only because most people have already max max melee. But actually, it, it does. Make Is it a simple lot of sense. to do? Relatively, I'd say it's like a medium, medium job. Fair enough. I guess like maybe if you had it so. Rather than limiting it to just attack and strength, if you had an option maybe to do, do you know where you have the balanced or you have your other three? If maybe yeah. you could select more than one, like, you know, like checkbox. So you could like check box like attack and defense or strength and defense, you know, with, yeah. with melee or something like that. Yeah, the way in which we work it out, that's, that's doable. Um, obviously, you wouldn't be able to choose, you know, like, I want to train magic and ranged at the same time, mm -hmm. but yeah. Well, it would well, probably be for melee, it'd be odd to train strength and range with range, yeah. potentially. It wouldn't work. Yeah, we wouldn't do it. <laughs> OK, so you the are, next, yes. I oh. want to check that on All the right. screen there. So yeah, 10 minutes left. Time has actually flown right, by yeah. quite quickly. Um, there are some questions that have come in from Twitter. The Twitter hashtag is at the bottom of the screen, which I did mention at the beginning. So we are going to um, answer some questions or take some questions from there as well. So the first one comes in from RS Jim Bobs. If you could rework any piece of content in game, what would it be and why? So fairly similar. If you could rework something, anyone to start off? Because I'm trying to think of something now quickly. Trouble brewing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it? Ah, uh, that's it's entertaining enough, but it needs some love. Better, better question: Who does like it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it has but it needs, needs some revision. Yeah. There's someone potentially. I don't know who made it, but there's someone potentially. <laughs> someone crying. Right <laughs> Not cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> Not cool. <laughs> Well, the amount of flack they've probably taken over the years, they've probably like mm -hmm. they've suppressed that by now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think. Have you got anything? Uh, I would. I would say Nimble. I think it'd be pretty cool if we actually managed to turn that into like a proper little kind of like sport game <laughs> that people could play. I think that'd be cool. I mean, there's some other kind of like games and stuff. Could we create like PvP Nimble stuff. or something? Yeah, man. It'd be cool. <laughs> just foul people. Just like, yeah, it'd be kind of like... They just uh, the ball off of them. Like, kind of like bye. Blood Bowl and Hut Bowl and stuff like that. Kind of like a light version of that or something like that. It'd be cool. Like, I think I'm just going to be boring and follow my exact same answer from before and just say that, well, I'd rework the, you know, the, the addition to the fight caves, the fight kill, and then just change it to be like much more mighty with a mighty boss fight at the end. I'd probably rework, well, I've already done the rework. Um, rework the, cru no, the crucible, it's dead. Um, and I saw a sign of life in there once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when they were boosting it for rewards. That no, was no, over. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> no, someone dropped a sign of life, as in the item. Oh, right, okay. In there. <laughs> <laughs> that's they, amazing. And like, I've seen a sign of life. <laughs> But yeah, basically, um, last time when we were doing, doing Legacy Dev, me and Chris, Chris L, um, basically reworked the Crucible to just be Bounty Hunter. Like, because I'm pretty sure that's what it was meant to be in the first place. So it's uh, the original Bounty like Hunter. Like, when, when you had it as the Craters, so yeah. that was like, what, 
10th of December 2007, it put, you took it out, put the craters in, and yeah. the, the volcano yeah. in the middle with the different tiers you could go in. Yeah, and it's got the whole things like, you know, if you, if you rogue kill someone and you pick stuff up, you can't leave for three minutes, that kind of thing. Fair enough. I think we can look to dig that out again and maybe... Yeah? Yeah, I think so. So, think another cool question coming in from Twitter is from Spin-RS. Are we going to see another Zaros or Elder God quest this year? I imagine I'll throw it your way. Stu, because you like, you like the law man. Uh, none of those are in, in development at the moment, but I think we have one more quest slot this year, is that right? From Rune Labs? Yeah, we've got the upcoming Rune Labs. Um, I think that's going to be in a couple of months' time, where players will get to choose a quest in a medium-sized... I guess um, the one that has just won is Seren Quest, obviously yeah. not, not a Zaros, but isn't Seren Zaros' long-lost kind of sister? Thing? Yeah, I think there's yeah. some association there was in between Zaros and Seren. Obviously Seren's going to be the focus. Yeah, we've got plenty, of, I feel like we've got plenty of six-age lore coming out this year, mm -hmm. um, but maybe not necessary Zaros. Okay. Um, another one coming in, it says, from Archie Time, because of the constant rebalance to the EOC, monsters have fallen far beyond the weak point. Will you address this? I guess just saying that some monsters are too weak. Um, yeah, Anarchy Time's got a good point. Um, <laughs> but I actually watch. What did I say? Yeah, Archie Time. <laughs> but Spent too much time in my Archie, basically. Yeah, that's, yeah, I that's even watch Sons of Anarchy, so I should know that. That's a frightening um, Freudian slip there. But it's something that's very much in the back of the minds of every single one of the content. Um, devs that work on combat is we'd love to just like, globally buff things and go you know what we're going to make things a bit harder again but the second you do that like the rage I guess oh my god the rage only just like, very recently though just yeah. passed but did pass was the uh, aggressive so monster's been aggressive well, yeah we, that's, we implemented that's for that. AFK though yeah. that, that the, so that with that um, there was a list and we did implement that so yeah I mean that bit has already been done so the, you, well, the, the you would aggressive pole thing. Like, do you, we, would you we'd like, like to do it, it but yeah. it's very a very sensitive issue. And obviously, if you start buffing things, it affects a hell of a lot in game. It'll affect the current XP rates. You know, it'll affect how long your Slayer task takes you. Like, there's an awful lot of knock-on effects that you need to think about. And it's not something that we can just go, you know, what, YOLO. Let's just double everyone's everything's health and defense. You know, you've got to you've got to take it as it comes and yeah, I think we're starting to do it in small batches here and there like for instance at the moment I'm doing a lot of I'm doing D&D &D improvements and I'm going through and I'm going right skeletal horror he's a pushover buff him the phoenix they're a pushover buff him the the champions in the champions challenge they're a pushover buff them so we're slowly getting around to doing it um, the bigger problems will be for like trash mobs so like your slayer kills for instance like if we buff them I'm pretty sure there's an awful lot of people that have a lot of very strong opinions on that kind of issue. However, you know, if, if everyone wants us to do does it, it does all it of the combat guys would love to. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Does it not come down to a, a point of like, they like it weak so they can get their Master Slayer cape? And oh God, yeah, do we have to take a standpoint at some point that says, there's, 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 there's there's know, definitely, this is for the best? Yeah. There's definitely a, that, a, a point at which we would need to step in. But if everyone is complaining, then is what we think for well, the best if, for the if best? <laughs> everyone is complaining. <laughs> um, like you said, it's a sensitive yeah. topic. So. Yeah, it is. Um, and it's one we need to get a global opinion on and, you know, just take as is, um, well, take in, in, in incremental steps um, because obviously it's a big topic. Um, but in terms of something we'd like to do it, we'd just like to get a lot of opinions on it and go about it in the right way. So I want to bring this one up just because um, of the name and also because you just mentioned it, but it's from Simon Swags. Which made me think of Mod Simon, so I thought, so I thought I'd uh, ask it. What happened to the D&D &D improvements? There was a blog in the Ninja Forum, and it was locked due to a delay, and has never been reopened. There was no update posted. There was one yesterday. Okay, so go. go into the Ninja Forums and look at the D&D &D improvements post. So Simon Swags, and um, is that coming soon? Is that something you're close to completing? Is it something you're currently still working on? You mentioned buffing the Phoenix and stuff, so I guess you're still working on it. Yeah, I am working on it. There's a, there's a dev blog up for feedback, so they'll have a full list. There are like buffs to rewards as well as buffs to um, like monsters, so I didn't just go in and go make everything harder. But um, yeah, but just ch check out the... Uh, Where can they find that? Ninja Forums? The Ninja Forum, yeah, so stick okay. in the Ninja Forum. 
Um, and then I got into this one from Jaqua. Uh, I guess I'm coming back to you again, but um, this is an interesting one that a lot of people were, at, were uh, voting up and uh, asking. Would it be possible to lock an item into a bank slot so when you take it out, it has a grayed out version of that item acting as a placeholder? So a lot of people collect two of a lot of items, you know, as a as a placeholder, as the name yeah, suggests. Yeah. Would it be okay? Would it be possible to add one? This is this is a really popular suggestion, but it's one of those ones where technical limitations just mean it would be a massive job. So it is possible. It's, it's yeah. Um, is it one of these? Possible it's one of those things that keeps on coming up, and we look into it and we go, mm, not really like you. The amount of work and you, it would be quite taxing and stuff. But you, know, as what happens with these things is you, you mention it again, and someone else goes, actually. I might have a different approach we can try, and someone did mention that the other day. So we are going to explore it again, but I can't promise anything. You, know, it's something we've mm -hmm. looked at several times, and you know, obviously, if it's the fact that it's not in the game is you, is that you means you know, we haven't been able to do it. It's something like a lot of us want as well as players. You know, so. how would you actually do it? Would you just spawn in like an invisible grey item to? Well, that's, that's the thing. That's like, like how, how yeah. do you do it? Is the is the problem really? Um, like, just for starters, the engine really doesn't like it if you have a stack size of zero. You know, if you have zero items in one of you, in a slot in an inventory. Maybe we'll get lucky really and Stu happy. just, he knows, he's like, I've got the solution to this. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the bank code, I've re rolled my <laughs> yeah. bank like I said, I'm pretty I've sure I've code. still got no. PTSD from the last time I touched the bank. <laughs> so, so for those who don't know, Pi did the update on the bank tab. Draggable, dra move dra dra draggable tabs, yeah. Draggable tabs, which I guess wasn't fun. That, <laughs> that hokey cokey between QA and me for weeks. Fair enough. Uh, another one coming from Twitter from Luke P 0277215 asks, could you make holiday items have a drop instead of destroy option? Why? Well, yeah, I guess if you drop it, you can just go get it from Diango, so it doesn't really. Yeah, I mean, that's. Really the, matter. Uh, you destroy it and you reclaim it from Diango. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the sort of thing yeah, like we could do, but we need a good enough reason to do it. Uh, there was a question. I can't think of an immediate one. There was a question that I really wanted to ask, and I know it was in here. I really, really, really want to find it. Um, because someone, here it is, I found it, because he, he said he'd asked it at every opportunity he gets to ask questions anywhere. He oh, we're out of time. Oh, <laughs> <hundreds yeah. of laughs> we are genuinely <laughs> out of time, so we might just have to, no, I'm, I'm going to give him it. So, Ventura NZ, if you are watching, you'll be super <laughs> happy, because <laughs> the demonic symbol from the Shadow of the Storm quest, if lost, cannot be retrieved. However, players who still possess one can operate it for a cool cosmetic animation. It was, is it like, was it an oversight that we can't get it back or make another one? I think it was more a case of the item was needed to uh, summon Agrithnar during Shadow of the Storm yeah. and that it wasn't anticipated that there would be a need for it uh, afterwards. Um, I'm not the curator for, for, for that, Maud Rowley is, but um, in principle, I th uh, having some means of reclaiming it after the quest shouldn't be an issue. Um, also, when we're doing Dimension of Disasters Demon Slayer, we were going to have a st stage in there that it involved making a demonic sigil and doing a similar sort of ritual. So we did have some updated animations for that that we never actually got around to plugging in. So it might be maybe worthwhile to add that in. Um, send it through as a bug fix uh, or put on the ninja, ninja backlog and we'll see if we can get that done. Yeah, so like just at the top of my head, just. I, you know, just while I was reading that, I was thinking back through the quest, the Shadow of the Storm, and the, is it the Ruins of Ooze, the one before it? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Um, I was just thinking about the golem. I'm thinking how cool that would be as a pet. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things I want like as a pet. you're programming with a key, like, you have something like crazy pet. <laughs> that would be cool. Um, anyway, the, like I said, we did run out of time. Okay, However, we'll someone well. has asked, I'm guessing from Twitter or somewhere, in general, in the chat, and up for an update on invention. So um, we have talked at the very start about kind of like ninja team changes and stuff. There's been a few other changes um, around the retention teams as well. Um, so Mod Olo, so that, that's correct, mm -hmm. yeah, has moved into uh, Mod Stu's team, the, the Guardians. Um, and with him, he's taken the invention project. Um, so the Guardians will be working on invention. Within that team, you've got like Mod Osborne, uh, Mod Molter has moved into that as well. So there's a lot of design, which like Invention really needs. Um, so they're gonna over the next few weeks, you they'll be starting on that and hammering away at that and coming up with designs and such. And you, I'm sure, like you, that team has been very good with their kind of like design documents and stuff in the past. And I'm sure you know, that sort of stuff will be done again. Um, but it's you, it's a big project, and 
you know, the guys need some time to you know, work out exactly what they want to do, but we will be involving the players heavily as well. Um, so th again, that was all we do have time for today. There are a lot of questions that I didn't answer. If you did ask your questions on you know, Reddit, the forums, um, Twitter, wherever you ask them, I probably have it here. Um, so keep asking them or leave them with me and I will try and get around to asking them hopefully next week as well. We're looking to make this a weekly deal so you do get to ask all those questions, especially the topical ones that we had towards the beginning where we discussed things that like the dark light, for example, and more relevant issues, and you will hopefully get like a proper answer about what's happening with that. Um, so we should see you again next week, hopefully. On top of that, though, there is a stream later on today at, I'm going to say 8 p.m., 20, yeah, 20 zero zero game time, which is 9 p.m. in the UK. Um, in our, we're on, what time? British summer time. Yeah, we're on BST, that's the one. We're on BST now, so 9 p.m. BST, or 8 p.m. in game time which is going to be myself and Mod Wolf opening 10,000 easy clue caskets. So that should be pretty fun as well, just to see what we get from them. Home and flows <laughs> of suitcases. <laughs> if you have a competition, you can get the most suitcases. So they're worth bang. Um, so we'll be doing that in the live game as well, so you can come and like chill and see what we get as well. So be sure to come back for that. But hopefully we'll see you, or most of us will see you. You're going away now, Stuart, aren't you? Um, I'm going to be uh, here next week, and then, ah. um, then I'll be away for three weeks. <laughs> You're leaving. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm going planning on going on holiday. I'm just postponed my holiday, holiday um, to sort out some projects before I leave. So. Well, hopefully most of us will be able to join you next week as well and answer even more of your questions. If you have any improvements, then I don't know where you can send improvements for the stream. Like, I would love to know what the well, answer I can We can create uh, one in the ninja section, I think. Yes, yeah, post maybe. it in the ninja section somewhere if you have improvements or things you think would be better for the stream. Like, I'd love to know because this is my first time hosting like, a Q&A like this for a mm -hmm. long time, so I'd love to hear it and you can... Tweet at Jagex underscore James as well. Like, shameless plug, but it's, I get the feedback yeah. straight away then, so that's always good. Uh, huge thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye. See you.